hide some for another math. Easy solution. Turn to discuss another uh, video on basically converting inverse hyperbolic trig functions to logarithms. And in, th in this video, I'm going to look at the inverse hyperbolic secant of x and basically show you can write it as ln or natural log of 1 divided by x plus square root 1 minus x squared all divided by x. And the domain for this function is basically x is greater than 0 and less than equal to 1 right here. And I just want to make a quick note on basically, uh, it, in my earlier videos, I went over inverse functions, uh, hyperbolic functions, and basically logarithms, and uh, a, a lot of other uh, videos related to what I'm going to cover today. So make sure to watch those in the video links below in the description. So anyways, before I prove this, first of all, I want to show that, uh, I just want to state that the secant, if we just look at the function, uh, not the not the inverse function, just just uh, hyperbolic secant of x. This is just basically by definition one divided by hyperbolic co cosine of x right here, and basically by definition this is equal to like I showed in my other video. This is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x all divided by two right here. And now here the first thing we should do is actually graph these functions out. Uh, this blue one is basically this uh, this cos hyperbolic cosine of x. So that's this one right here. And now I have graphed basically the inverse of it is 1 divided by it. So if this looks like a parabola, and then basically you're going to have 1 divided by that. So as you go really high, 1 divided by high number is going to go level off like that. So the red one is basically the uh, hyperbolic secant of x. And now uh, the last function here, basically when we look at an inverse now, which is this one right here, this is basically written as a, as a natural log, the one I just showed above. And this one, yeah, basically I sh this exact one is I wrote it down here. So this one is the uh, inverse hyperbolic uh, secant of x. And as you can see, in this case here, uh, just, just ignore this one, Google, Google graph that, so that's not part of this one. Let's put an x like this. So this one, like I showed in my earlier video, for inverse functions, if you draw the, the, the line y equals x, so just a straight line across this y equals x, inverse functions are just basically the mirror image about it. So when we, we're trying to inverse this secant of x, so we basically make a mirror image, as you can see, it goes down like this, but now we're going up like this. But the, and the reason why we don't uh, mirror this part, because this one right now is the only thing we mirrored from, from uh, here all the way past to this point, because basically when you mirror this part as well, you're gonna get something like this that goes down, but now you're, you'll have, a, you won't have a one-to-one one -one function, meaning at an x value here, you're gonna have either y here or y here, so you have two values. So you cannot do that, so you have to pick a domain, and in this case, we're only gonna pick basically, yeah, we're only gonna pick from here to here right here. So, and this one, as you see, because you're gonna have, uh, in this case, going to infinity here, you're going to be 1 divided by infinity, so you're going to go to, uh, basically the y is going to go to infinity up there. So our domain is going to be from 0, less than x, and then less than equal to 1, because that's this, this point where we just flipped over, or just mirror image across this line. Let's put that here. So that's where we get our domain from. And now that we've uh, got our domain, and basically we can go, uh, go about and prove uh, that, to basically convert it to a logarithm. So first of all, if we, we let's say let y equals two inverse hyperbolic secant of x. This is basically the same thing as writing. Yeah, this is the exact same thing as writing x equals two uh, hyperbolic secant of of y right now. So this is the exact same thing as this is just what inverse function means. You just flip the x and y's, and now you have to solve for y in this case. So now this one here, uh, this is equal to one divided by hyperbolic cosine of y. So now when we have this part, so it looks like that. So now what we could do is is basically f uh, solve for uh, hyperbolic cosine of y in terms of x. So we could just, just basically move this over to the left side and divide this out over there. So we'll get hyperbolic cosine of y is equal to it is equal to one divided by x here. So we just flip this over, and now by definition of the hyperbolic cosine of y. This is equals to e to the y plus e to the negative y all divided by 2 right here. So now what we're going to do is actually multiply the 2 out over here and then move everything onto one side. So we're going to basically have zeros equal to 
e to the y plus e to the negative y minus now 2 divided by x. So I just multiply by 2 over here and move this on this side. So we got this part here now. Like in my earlier videos, the, the trick here is basically to make it look like a quadratic function. So multiply by e to the y, e to the y on this side as well. And basically the left side, e to the y minus 0 is just 0. And now the right side, we're going to get basically e 2y plus now in this case here, we'll get e, e uh, negative y times it by, well, e to the y. And again, here we're going to have 2 over x times e to the y right here. But in this case right here, this e to the y times e y, this uh, if we, with if you see my earlier video on power functions and their properties, basically these add up. So we go e to the y, negative y plus y, that equals 2, e to the 0, and e to the 0 is just 1 right there. And then basically, and also if we write this in such a way that, and also rearrange this, we'll get e to the y, I'll write this like this to the power of 2 just to make it look like a quadratic formula. I'll show why in a bit. This is the same thing as writing e to the 2y. So this doesn't change anything. Now I'm going to write this first then this after just to make it uh, make it mo look more like the uh, quadratic function. So now minus 2x, uh, 2 divided by x times e to the y. Now plus 1 right here. That's just this 1 over there. So now this looks like a quadratic formula, right? I mean a quadratic function and I'll show you what I mean by that. But in, the, in this case, instead of x, we're dealing with e to the y. And so here I've written a quadratic formula. Basically, you have a quadratic function like 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Then you could solve for x using this formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. You see, prove this also in the video links below. But now instead of x, we're dealing with e to the y. This is the exact same thing here. But in, in our case, basically, uh, the x is equal to, or we're going x is basically the e to the y. And now our a is equal to 1. There's nothing in front of it. Our b is equal to negative 2 divided by x. That's just this right here. And then our c is just 1 right here. So we get c is equal to 1. Now we could solve for e to the y. So we go e to the y is equal to negative uh, negative b, which is this one, we're just going to get 2 divided by x. Now plus or minus square root b squared, that's just going to be 4x squared, we're squaring this. Now we're going to do a minus 4 times a c, a is 1, c is 1, just leave it at 4 like that. So we get that, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1, so we just leave it like this. And also, uh, now what we could do, actually, we could f take this 4 out, uh, we could factor this squared out and make it a bit more simplified. So we get square root, take the 4 out of there, 1 divided by x squared, minus 1. And now we could square root the 4, which is just 2. So we'll get 2 times 1 over 1 divided by x minus 1 right here. And then if we write that down, we'll get basically e to the y is equal to 2 divided by x plus or minus 2. And now we'll get a 1 minus uh, 1 divided by x squared minus 1, all divided by 2. We could cancel the 2's out, so we'll just be left with e to the y is equal to, well, actually, uh, before I get, uh, I'll simplify a bit further. We can simplify this part here by multiplying by the common denominator, which is x squared, so x squared divided by x squared on this one. So then this part right here will just equal to, if we just look at the square, inside the square root, we'll get 1 minus x squared all divided by x squared right here. And now if we if we square root the x squared, in this case, since since the domain is basically 0 to, uh, in between 0 and, uh, and 1 right here, it's always going to be positive, so we don't need to worry about absolute value or negative signs or anything. So we can just square root this one. As If you see my earlier video on hyperbolic cosecant of x, you'll, know, you'll see why this would matter if this was if you were dealing with negative numbers. But anyways, so with this one here, we square the bottom. We'll get basically this would equal to one divided by oh, I mean square root one minus uh, yeah square root one minus x squared all divided by x right here. So now we get that part. Plug it in. Cancel the two. We get one divided by x plus or minus uh, now square root one minus x squared all divided by x right here. But now we're dealing with this plus or minus, but the thing is, e to the y is actually going to be greater than 1. And that's because 
in our range y is greater than basically uh, zero or greater than equal to zero. So this one actually we put this y, uh, e to the y is greater than or equal to zero because if this is greater than or equal to zero, if we look if we scroll up, you can see right here in this uh, when we graph it out, when we well, basically when we inverse the function, it it has to be basically the y function is greater than zero right here. So we get y is greater than or equal to zero. Zero is the lowest, and it goes up and higher and higher. So if, if it's like that, basically this is the same thing as writing e to the zero, because e to the zero is equal to one, so that's the lowest you can get. And then it, as it goes higher and higher, you can obviously be gonna be greater than, yeah, it's gonna be greater than one when you get higher and higher. Yeah, but now when we look at uh, this function right here, this one uh, divided by, well, yeah, basically one over x, this is greater than uh, square root one minus x squared over x, but it's it's uh, but it's actually close to it. It's greater, but it's actually really close to it. And when you could see that by graphing it, and if you were to graph it right here, I've graphed graph it with Google. So this is the one divided by x is the blue, and then this is square root one divided one minus x squared all divided by x. So as you can see, when you when basically x is really small, it becomes really similar because they're both going to go to infinity. You're dividing by basically close to zero, and then but then. The, the biggest separation is basically at this point when x equals 1. If we plug in x equals 1, we get 1 here. And this one will get basically square root 1 minus x, uh, which if it's 1, it's going to be 0 here. So we have a 0. This is difference of 1 right here. So that's the biggest difference. So when we're subtracting something with a small number like this, uh, for, we will get basically this difference is this uh, equation right here, if, if we had a subtraction. So if we had a subtraction, this difference would be less than one, but we cannot have it less than one because we have e to the y is greater than or equal to one. So we only pick, so we can, the only true one is the positive. So we cannot use the negative one right here. So basically we, we will end up with e to the y is equal to one divided by x plus and only plus square root one minus x squared divided by all divided by x right here. But now what we have here, and now we can basically lawn both sides like I showed in my other video. Lawn both sides, put a lawn here, and we get, here I just fixed up, so you put a lawn both sides here, and then the reason for that is once again using the log properties, the y goes down, and then we'll be dealing with y times uh, lawn e, and this one is basically lawn e is just equal to one, see this more in this video links below, and now this equals to again lawn yeah, ln 1 divided by x uh, plus square root 1 minus x squared all divided by x. And now we uh, just get rid of this one. So we get y is equal to, yeah, y is equal to ln 1 divided by x plus square root uh, 1 minus x squared all divided by x right here. And, and once again, the domain is 0 is less than x and x is less than or equal to 1 here. And basically y is greater than 0. That's basically the it's given by the law and function. Anyways, that's all for today. And this is basically the exact same thing that I was trying to prove. And we just wrote y, which is basically, uh, yes, yeah, so y is equal to inverse hyperbolic co secant of x right here. And that's just equals to the this log function. Anyways, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. And remember, you can download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below. And that's all for today. And hope you enjoyed. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.